I liked this episode. I think it was a good episode. I'm still in a very teeter tottery place with this season. Yeah, I think I figured out what's going on. I, I, I think it's because more so than previous seasons, we don't actually know what we're building to. Right. Would you agree? Yeah, there's no keys. There's no monster in Elliot. There's no, um, you know, Martin Chatwin. I, yes, that's We're correct. not defeating the beast. We're not trying to like, yeah. It, and I mean, we were given two objectives, which is prevent an apocalypse and or overthrow a dark king. Mm-hmm. But they've been very vague. And so as we're going from week to week, I at least feel like there's not quite the emotional payoff that the show has gotten us accustomed to and i'm trying very hard to to not go to the conclusion that it's from removing quentin yeah but it might be based on this episode that we just watched i think i know what they're doing so okay it is not because there's no quentin okay but i don't want to elaborate and spoil Oh, like you like they book, have book been stuff? they have with some of the stuff in this episode, they have set up the end of the third book. Oh, OK. Yeah, I was going to be like, well, then tell me your theory, because <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, no. I mean, I could tell you because it is just a theory. I have no, no I don't. real reason to believe that that's how they're going. But some of the specific words they use and the addition of Julia's pregnancy. Mm. I am pretty confident okay (laughs) so then should i be making my piece that this might be the end i think they could still go forward but having this would be a end a good end it would be a good end and having still no news about a season six i think we might start making our piece yeah okay it 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 does bum me out that i feel like it, it it's like both but it bums me out that I feel like people will say it was getting rid like of Quentin. Yes, people will say that forever, it, despite the fact that presumably if they are ending it how the books ended, then it was Sarah Gamble's decision. OK, so. OK, yeah. So this was a particularly tropey episode that. Yeah, we had somehow- a body swap and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was zombie, ap- a zombie plague. Yeah, it was a lot. I well, OK, <laughs> I still and not fathom what the fuck Alice's storyline is. But based on what you just said, I feel like you can't go into it. <laughs> I can't really go into it. Um, although what I can say is that she's actually not heavily involved in the process in the book at that point. Well, because she, Alice never comes back in the book. She's a Niffin forever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> she she has part of it. Are you going to be able to do this? <laughs> <laughs> she has part of the thing. Is she taking over Quentin's role in? Mm, maybe. Well, it's okay, been regard- a while. I okay, it's been a while since I read it. And also, they even though it sounds like it is going in that direction, they are still doing it differently. Okay. I don't want to know, because even last year... When you told me that his discipline was minor mendings, it was mm. like the next episode where we got that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I was kind of like, oh, but OK, I don't understand really her plot. Having said that, though, this is the most I have ever liked Alice on this show. And I cannot tell you why. It's because I suspect it's because she's in a very nothing left to lose place. And so she is just kind of getting down to brass tacks. Which has always been my favorite, Alice. But There's a lot less artifice to her when she is in this place. And a lot less grief and not like boohoo grief, but like, yeah, strife. You know what I mean? It's just yes, like because she even had that. OK, and I am also coming around on backs because I was weird on him last week. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, I especially if this is going to be the last season. Mm-hmm. Weird thing to just throw a new guy in there. But I came around him a lot this episode, especially that scene that they had together where we find out that his wife passed away and she was like, when does it start getting better? And he was like, never. And I was (laughs) like, yeah, it's pretty right. I don't know what else to say. As strange as I found the whole entire Spore plot line, I did like that it was, as we've been saying a lot, a fantasy is a metaphor for reality. Yeah. That it, it was like mirroring the process of the grief. Yeah, definitely. That like it never goes away. It just becomes a part of you. Because mm-hmm. that's the moment that I loved so much. And that's the Alice that I love so much when she is telling the Penny 
mushroom or whatever. <laughs> when she's like, she's just sort of like laying him out and she's like, you know, we're spreading you too thin. You're not, you're going to be a part of this forever, but you're just going to be quieter. And I was like, oh God. Yeah. I was like, was, that's like such a, it, that's such a sadistic thing to do to like a sentient organism. Mm-hmm. But it's, I mean, it's and it's the kind of thing also. where it's like, I feel like they could absolutely bring that back if we need a deus ex machina. But also, I also kind of like the idea that it's just this weird sarlacc pit like this weird hell yeah like, or like <laughs> how there just is opium in fillery <laughs> like there's just opium in the air in fillery <laughs> we got we got some good stuff like that i forgot to mention last week there was a line that i cannot remember what they said but it was prime the magicians hilarious where they were talking about somebody it might have been finn but rafe was like she's gone what the animals call human crazy oh yeah <laughs> That was so funny to yeah, me. <laughs> I liked that quite a lot, actually. Just the implications of it, that it's like that the animals have their own language. And it's like, because it, I guess it's kind of like how we'll say crazy like a fox. Mm. But it's like, what does that mean? She, Of course she's gone human crazy. Yeah. She's a human <laughs> who is crazy. Like, I thought that was so funny. It, it's been a very strange use of Fen this season. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But... I, I went to her because of that. And then also the toe worms I thought was really funny. And it's okay. like, <laughs> I have things to say about the toe worms because okay. I love Stella Maeve and she has brought something to Julia the entire run because I didn't love Julia in the books. Mm -hmm. She's a lot of character and they've treated her differently as well in the show. So that is all being said to say that Stella Maeve is one of my favorite actresses on this show. Absolutely. I have never enjoyed a moment of hers more than I did every time she said toe worms and looked at Brittany Curran <laughs> for with confirmation those eyes. that she was doing it right. Un but well, if, be, confirmation that she was doing it right, but also like irritation that she had to keep up this ruse about having toe worms. It was Stella's performance was fucking incredible. It was so ridiculous, and I, I. I laughed out loud, like guffawed out loud every time she did it. It was so <laughs> ridiculous. And that's that's how the character of Finn, who is like probably our secret MVP, but certainly Miss Congeniality. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, 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 it's, it's the nuggets we get into her rich inner life mm -hmm. that are mere accoutrements on for the rest of the show, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just wouldn't hate, and I, I, I think we might get it because we've gotten it from her before and we've hinted at it even this season, but I wouldn't hate one or two more real moments from her. From Fen, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, especially there was this, there was this moment when they were all having their meeting in the woods and they were like asking for suggestions or something and Fen raised her hand mm -hmm. and Elliot was like, just talk. Like, what are you doing? And those glimpses into their marriage also are so wild because it's like, because we haven't had that. We haven't exactly. had them functioning like a unit since like season three. Exactly. And so on the one hand, it kind of annoyed me because I was like, Elliot, be a little nicer. But on the other hand, I was like, can you even imagine? Like he was with her for so much longer than we saw. Mm -hmm. Like they spent time together that we didn't see. And I just can you imagine her being your wife when you are mostly gay and like and just endlessly having her raise her hand and do shit like that? Mm -hmm. Because this is something that we've gotten some fun. We've had some fun with this season, especially. But the pairing, because there was a point where we well, we had Margot, Elliot, Julia, Finn and Josh, which mm -hmm. is like a group that we have never had before. Yeah. Not all at once. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then like they've all been in Fillory at the same time before, but they've never had to work a problem together. Well, Julia spent like at most two episodes in Fillory. That's so. true. That's true. She's also I mean, everyone on the show is one of my favorite characters, but it's mm -hmm. like I, I I am really still enjoying it when she came at the end and killed Sebastian. I'm not going to call him Seb. I don't know what it is yeah. with these shows and these like I don't like that clumsy nicknames because like, <laughs> I didn't see it coming and I should have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> Well, I honestly thought it was going to I thought for a minute it was going to be Elliot in Margot's body having realized that he could do it. But the mm. Julia thing was much better. 
I've just been so aware from the beginning that this is this plot is more complicated than they're like, I want to know, has d- does anyone really think he's actually the Dark King, that he's actually this evil villain? Mm. Yeah. OK, so in that sense, it is kind quite a lot like what we're dealing with on Riverdale right now, where it's like, what is actually true? Like from the moment that they did that weird play, I was like, this is clearly revisionist history. Absolutely, I just yeah, I, I was like, so what? What was he doing with the quote unquote takers? We've barely even seen the takers. I'm like, there is something else very it's clearly happening. We also have the fairies in play. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I really do want to know what we're what we're building to. And so like, like in that regard, it's like I can't even necessarily say that I'm not liking it. I just feel like I'm frustrated and confused in a way that I am not typically while watching the show. See, we are like the opposite on the opposite shows where I'm feeling very much like that on Riverdale and you're like, it's going to be fine. And you're <laughs> feeling like that, that on the magicians. And I'm like, it's going to be fine. I think it is. but <laughs> Like, I believe it is. So, yeah. uh, they did the, the Margot and Elliot body swap there. I honestly don't have a lot to say about it because it was very tropey. Like it was very, what you would expect. And as always, you know, the entire cast is phenomenal. And for a minute when they swapped, I was like, oof, they're going to overdo this. Like, I'm not going to like the very first scene when they're swapped. I was like, they're both going a little too hard. But as it kept going, it was much more nuanced. There was no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Like I was watching a scene with Elliot and Josh, even yeah. though it was Summer Bischel. Do you know what I mean? Like, percent. And especially, especially there was a moment where. They made Hale Appleman say Jesus is clit. Oh, I know. I can't. <laughs> that's the only one that's hurt my feelings. Really? It was too much. It was. <laughs> I don't know. I We weren't allowed to blaspheme when I was little, and I do it all the time now. But that one, for whatever reason, I was like, Whoa. Maybe it was because it wasn't coming out of Summer Bischel. Because I liked when she said Jesus is tits. But yeah. <laughs> clit that one was like what, a step, a bridge too far. That, yeah, I was like, oh. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to answer for this at the pearly gates for hearing this. No, you're not. <laughs> like, I'm not what even Catholic, and my Catholic God. guilt kicked in. Like, but no, it kind of made me laugh because at first I was mad at Margot for not being better at it than she was, but mm. then I was like, actually, that's very Margot. Yeah, subtlety has never been in something she's good at, and. Did we have we addressed Charlton in our coverage? I feel like we haven't. I feel like we've glossed over him every time. I the only thing I really want to say. Uh, well, I want to say a lot of things about Charlton, which we did talk about him in the episode. Did with we? The whales. OK. Yeah, because that was when Elliot let him out. They keep playing it in the in the previously on at the beginning of the episodes. But the moment when Elliot has moon brain and he lets Charlton out and the whole time he thinks it's going to be like the monster again or something. And it's just Charlton. And the way that he just so befuddled goes, Charlton, <laughs> I like, cannot get over that delivery from him. Well, it's and another thing it's that amazing. I feel like is very deliberate. Like it has to be leading somewhere unless what it was leading to was explaining how Margot pulled off this mm. thing. Uh, but that feels a little too easy, I think. Yeah, I, I feel like that had that's deliberate. They did that for a reason. And also, I miss Hyman. I want him to come back. But. I know me, too. He was on um, he was on an episode of Watchmen. He's on something else, too. He's on um, shit. Oh, God. What is the name of that show that I like so much? It's the spinoff of the Fosters on Freeform. I literally I, can't I think of the name of it, but yeah, he's on that. Know. He's like a regular on that. Uh, well, which is why he's probably not back. But, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, also Ray, the hot bald guy, is that actor. It's like Michael Griziadelli or something. Yeah, he was hot. The mushroom uh, guy. Yeah, we talk yeah. about him a lot because he was in Watchmen. He was in 911. He was an American Horror Story. Mm. I, I don't understand why he's bald because he's not. And it's like. <laughs> oh, it was working for me. Really? Uh, he, well, OK, he, his hair used to be long and blonde. So, oh, OK, well, um, sure, that would work better, obviously. <laughs> But yeah, and then he came and went. But there is another thing, and because I, I made a note of it in this episode, but there's another thing that has been bothering me about this about this season. And I know I've said it, but I want to come back to it. And it's that they are jumping, leaping to conclusions left and right in a mm. way that I find frustrating. Like, the well, first of all, like what you just said with Elliot, just assuming that whatever was happening to him was evil. Yeah. And in the beginning of this episode, when 
they say something about the takers and Julia was like, obviously, that's what I'm here to stop because that's the like apocalypse or whatever. And I'm like, mm. how would you know that? OK, like, yeah, what? those those things for sure. For a minute, I thought you were going to be like, like, how is Alice jumping to the conclusion that the about the spores or whatever? But I for me, that is like that part is like a shorthand for like they've learned a lot across the years and blah 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 but your thing is correct it's I been like two to three times per episode they've been like well clearly that me like yeah <laughs> yeah like the end of fantasy island where they're like clearly <laughs> this means that blank is happening i'm like does it though yeah does because... it? i think you're really reaching <laughs> yeah and i've been meaning to mention it for the last three weeks but why is alice suddenly wearing a wig is she it's awful i hate it so much maybe yeah. olivia got another job and her I hair is know. different because she's had that hair. I googled her and it's yeah. always like that. But. Yeah. Well, Julia, Julia's pregnant. Mm-hmm. I literally want to say red monkey month. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Again, hilarious. Just all these little nuggets. And I think on a lesser show, we would be like, well, that's fucking convenient. And to which I kind of did. But at the same time, I was like, no, it sounds right. <laughs> it is. But I think it's rooted in enough truth because imagine, you know, someone from another world coming here and we're like, oh, every four years, February has an extra day. Don't yeah. you know that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. And it's kind of like, why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Julia is pregnant because my notes were very like, I was like, oh, God, Julia's pregnant. And I was like, again. And I was like, oh, it's a magic pregnancy again. <laughs> I mean, I, it, this is, it's a human pregnancy, but it's going faster it's, because of magic. Oh, here was another time I wrote with the jumping to the conclusions is the whole the Dark King is immortal because of like a conduit. And so Elliot was like, clearly the tattoo that he has of a tree is what's keeping him alive. And I was like, if how? Like, how is that clear? Yeah, like, how it's is not that exactly- like 100%. I mean, it's not like the worst place to start, but <laughs> <laughs> sure. But yeah, so again, so he is not dead. He woke up at the end and I, I don't know. I really, really, really am buying. I, I bought into the Elliot and sebastian thing and i guess it's because i like sean mcguire so much yeah i, I mean feel they like have we... they have good chemistry they had a good like meet cute <sighs> it works their little makeout scene was hot oh yeah of course they're both hot men it's gonna I... be hot <laughs> i do wish we could have we could see a little bit more of it and i'm hoping that whatever explanation because i mean i'm still leaning into he and i'm not necessarily saying he has to be quentin's son but it's like that's something they dangled out there a while because you know what else they dangled out there is what was the woman it's the woman in the first episode of season two that lived in the gingerbread house Mm. she made a deal with quentin about something oh my god that's right and it never paid off it did not what was the deal i don't remember but he also had that wooden arm that never came back around. There's a part of me because like because I was even frustrated just out of curiosity. I went back and was re-listening to some of our season four coverage. Yeah. And I was suddenly remembering things where I was like, oh, yeah. What about Irene McAllister? Yeah. I feel like there are so many things that they have like like, well, breadcrumbs that they've laid throughout the series that haven't paid off yet in a way that I'm hoping we are, are going to mean something. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm less invested in the J- Jamie Ray Newman part because she felt like a very season four or season three villain that like did. I mean, she's still out there, but she didn't really have unfinished business. Yeah, but I thought that they mentioned the McAllister several more times. Like it was one of those when you least expect it, they'll be back. Maybe. And there's something called the couple now that's out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, my mind went to sort of like an Adam and Eve place, but Could be. again, not not necessarily saying that I literally think it's Adam and Eve, but it kind of like a first man and first woman sure. type thing. So I do have faith and I do have hope that all of this is going to come together. And again, if all of this pays off, then it was worth it, because at the beginning of our coverage of the season, mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want for their Quentin issues to be done by episode three you know what i mean it's like i didn't want one episode where they all cried and then we forgot he even existed by the fifth episode and so it's like his presence is still so much in this show a hundred percent yeah and also we still don't know what katie's doing like in theory she wasn't even in this episode or the last week yeah so it's like there still is a lot in the air and if it goes somewhere because we still have the woman with the signal from the beginning that penny's student yeah and we have utidi badaki and her sister as well yeah there's a lot of parts that are landing (laughs) yeah there are a lot of parts that are still moving out there somewhere 